everyone, I'm Danny Walker. Welcome to my channel. Today's episode is a recap for Miss Teen USA Finals 2019. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope that you checked out the recap for the preliminary competition as well. Guys, if you're new to this channel, please be sure to subscribe, share this video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, hit that notifications bell, and also follow me on social media at Danny Walker. So let's talk about Miss Teen USA 2019. The one thing that I want to start off with is production. The overall show itself, I thought as a whole, it was great. I loved seeing Nia Sanchez come back as a host for the show. I love when they bring formers back. I thought Tim did a phenomenal job as well. I thought it was surprising how much stage time that they gave Haley as well as the length of her farewell, the video footage that they showed of her as well as that final walk. I thought that was fabulous. A lot of times pageant systems sort of don't care about the outgoing title holder and I thought it was so great how much they showed their appreciation for Haley during the finale. I thought that that was so beautiful. As I mentioned a little in the preliminary recap that it was interesting this year that prelims and finals were on the same stage. Also I think that's because they were held on the same date so that's for convenience. I didn't mind seeing that but the only thing I do mind is that Teen USA and USA does share the same stage so now I wonder how is the Miss USA stage going to look. It also makes me feel like it takes away from the individual experiences of both age divisions, so I would have preferred to see different stages for the two different divisions. The one thing that struck me as strange during the show was after they announced the top 15, they brought them back on stage and then each girl took center stage as they read an MC card that was already read for the preliminary competition. I don't know who that was really for. In the past, we've seen that a girl will take the stage and an announcer is talking about fun facts about her as she is walking over to her place in semifinals. And I think that's a better use of stage time. I prefer that format. If they were gonna do something like that, I preferred that they would have let the girls speak for themselves like we heard at the Miss Universe competition. I would have loved that. But this is how the show went this year. What do you guys think? Were you loving the preliminary show? What are your thoughts on the production? And who did you have predicted in your semifinals or even in your top five? Comment that below. Most girls that were called for top 15 were in my initial picks. And I think the discrepancy between girls who placed top 15 that I liked versus ones that I didn't predict is that interview competition. We just don't know what happens behind those doors and that is a huge determining factor. The ones that I was surprised by in the top 15 were Kansas, Nebraska, Maryland. For athletic wear, I thought that Oklahoma was so cute. To me, when I saw her and her styling and her ponytail, I just thought she's so teen appropriate and appeals to that age demographic. The next ones I want to mention was I loved Illinois' energy on stage for finals. I thought she really turned it up, but for me, it was not over the top, and that's what I loved. Arkansas, I took a note of her good head tilt, and it's not that I'm saying to do a head tilt or would suggest that for girls, but sometimes when girls have a specific turn or pose that they're really great at that works for them, it'll do well at a pageant. And I feel like when I saw Arkansas do that very unique slight head tilt that she did during athletic wear, that that was one of those things that just works for her. And my advice for other contestants is to find what that is for you. So you're a head tilt equivalent. Mississippi, not surprised, talked about her in the prelim recap. South Carolina, I just wrote great. To me, she was just solid, easy pick. North Dakota, made it and I mentioned that I loved her still love her Connecticut all I wrote was shines shines because she just was glowing the whole time I was super excited about Wyoming she was one of those girls that I was on the fence about but what I loved was that this is probably a really unique experience for her coming from Wyoming they talked about how she wakes up every day at four in the morning and feeds the animals on the farm I just loved seeing her place at Miss Teen USA to have that experience that's so unique for her that just made my heart 
heart really, really happy and smile. In Tennessee, I wrote that hair because I loved her so much. Oklahoma. I thought that the ponytail, keeping it for gown was a really great choice because I thought that that dress could get too mature very quickly and the ponytail saved it. Illinois, I put a heart just because I love her gown so much. Mississippi, I put a heart too because I'm such a fan of that girly pink style that she wore. North Dakota, loved her. I put a star by her name, that really stood out to me. Alabama, I put a star by her during evening gown because I just thought, fabulous. Connecticut, I thought she did a great job, but something happened with the camera angles where I feel like she didn't get that best camera look for finals. Obviously, it didn't really hurt her. Uh, for Wyoming, I put like, cute. <laughs> because I'm just obsessed with her. Tennessee, to me, was still a standout, and I think really for visual purposes, you can't help but just draw your eye to her. Last thoughts, top five on stage questions. So in the top five, we had Mississippi, North Dakota, Nevada, Connecticut, and Alabama. I thought that it was great that they gave them that quick little warm-up question. I think that's important, especially for teen contestants to just kind of get you a little loosened up on stage. The girls were awesome. To me, it really made sense why Nevada was up in that top five because you could tell that she must have had a very strong interview. The way that she was able to immediately refer to a part of her brand in that question, and not in a way that I would say sounds insincere, inauthentic, but it's like you knew that she was planning for these things. Connecticut, I like that she just talked about something different, being an eco-counselor, something we hadn't heard from her before, and she didn't go too on brand. She didn't try to push anything. So for the finals questions, I thought that they asked them great questions, and overall, the girls did a really great job. So Mississippi, I like that she connected it to her campaign, You Matter, and that it had that personal connection. I felt that the overall delivery could have just been a little bit cleaner, but still, for a Team, you guys this is amazing what they're able to do on stage North Dakota they asked about student loans I like that she referenced that she applied for multiple scholarships to help her in college which I think is great advice for a lot of teen contestants Nevada I, I love that she referenced community service and that question about should community service be mandatory that she talked about the work that she's already done Connecticut's answer I was watching with Matt who's my friend but he's He's also a director for NAMM. And halfway through the show, we were like, okay, so Connecticut's winning the whole thing. As if she wasn't already winning, the answer sealed the deal. So they were asking about how 61% of boys, you know, think it's important to make all this money, essentially. And it was a smaller percentage, almost half uh, less of girls valued money less, something like that. She ended up saying that she believes that women essentially aren't equating their success in life to money, that they know that they can be successful individuals with or without that. And it was just such a confident statement and so well spoken, so well delivered. That for me is going to go down as just one of the best responses I've ever heard in a pageant, especially for teen contestants during that top five. So she 100% earned that title, you guys. She was just, she was phenomenal. And then Alabama, I was driving in the car when we were watching this on YouTube, so I could not clearly hear the end of her answer, but I thought it was just so short and so quick. Maybe that was because she didn't know what to say and she didn't want to ramble and she just wanted to cut that off. I think that she probably wasn't just prepared for that question. I don't know, maybe she just got nervous or didn't understand the question, not sure. Those are my overall thoughts for Miss Teen USA 2019. Thank you for checking out this episode. If you want to see more like this, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell, as well as follow me on social media at Danny Walker. If you're watching on a mobile device, please screenshot this episode and post it in one of your Instagram stories and tag me at Danny Walker with your thoughts on it. I would love to hear from you. If you haven't already, also follow me on social media while you're there at Danny Walker. Thanks for checking out this episode and I hope you tune in for more.